3, you'll notice we skipped 8.2. It was mostly computer generated, and uh, we don't have computers at our school handily for uh, most of our kids. So, uh, so I'm skipping that lesson right there. So when I checked, I was looking at the homework. I could do one small piece in there, but none of the, the homework questions uh, lined up with the small piece. So I'm just skipping that. So I hope you don't mind. So here, uh, describe two-dimensional figures that result from slicing three-dimensional figures. And you're thinking, what? Okay, think of like pyramids, you guys, or like a basketball. That's a three-dimensional figure. Or a box is a three-dimensional figure. Or a can, like a, uh, a soda can or a can of uh, beans or something. So those are three-dimensional figures. So how do we describe cross-sections of these three-dimensional figures? So this uh, that's what this lesson's about. Okay, so uh, we're going to do rectangular prisms first. We're going to do cross-sections of those. And don't think of a box, you guys, any kind of box. A cereal box, a box you get in the mail. Um, any kind of box, okay? Your classroom is probably in a box shape form, okay? So the intersection is a point or set of points common to two or more geometric figures. And you're thinking, what the heck is that? Well, all this will all unwind here shortly, okay? So a plane, you guys, a plane is like the floor or a wall or a window or your whiteboard. I always talk about uh, the plane, uh, our whiteboard being the plane in, in our class when I'm doing geometric uh, description. So a plane is a flat surface that goes on forever and ever and ever in all directions. So what is it? Is it a rectangle? I don't know. A circle, I don't know, it goes forever and ever and ever, everywhere, so what is it? I don't know, but it's flat. Okay, a cross-section is the intersection of a three-dimensional figure, like a basketball, a box, or a pyramid, or, or uh, they call them cylinders, uh, which are cans, okay, and, so, and a plane. So when you slice a plane through a, um, a three-dimensional figure, that gives us a cross-section. So just imagine... A plane slicing through three-dimensional figures. Like here, here's a cone, you guys. This figure shows the intersection of a cone and a plane. Okay, so here's our cone. It's kind of this sort of peachy, orangey kind of looking guy, and our plane is the blue guy. And just imagine it going, pew, slicing that right there. And, and the cross section right there is that circle right there. Can you see that right there? Okay, that's what this is. Okay, so here's a figure of a pyramid, or I'm sorry, a prism, you guys. A prism, it's called a triangular prism. We'll talk more about this when you get into uh, my Integrated Math 3 class. A prism has two congruent sides. So here's a triangle, here's a triangle, and then all the faces are usually rectangles. So here's a rectangle right here. Okay, and then on the bottom, there's a rectangle right here. I don't know if you can imagine that rectangle. Dotted, 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 dotted. Okay, and so, and then uh, over on the side, it looks like a parallelogram when it's in three dimensional form, but it's actually another rectangle right there. So, right there, and then I'll go across right there. Can you see that rectangle right there? Okay, that's what a prism is. It has two congruent, they call them bases. And then all the other sides are con connected by rectangles, okay? At least the, the ones we'll be talking about, okay? Sometimes they're parallelograms, but in this case. Anyway, so here's a prism right here, and it's being sliced by this blue plane. And they typically draw planes as looking like a parallelogram or a rectangle or something. Anyway, so here's a plane. Remember, the plane goes on forever that way, forever that way, up here, down there. But where it slices this prism right here, this triangular prism, it makes this gray triangle right here, okay? So the cross section is that gray triangle, okay? A three-dimensional figure can have several different cross sections depending on the position and the direction of the slice. So, for example, if the cross section of a plane and a cone were vertical, the cross section would be a triangle, okay? So here is a uh, here's a cone right here, and here's a plane going right through this dude right here. It's called the vertex of this cone right here. And cones have a circular base. It's a circle on the bottom. But can you see the cross section is this dotted sort of grayish triangle right here? Now that's only if it goes through the vertex right here. What if it slices it like right here? It would give us what's called a, a parabola. Okay, that's later. That's high school math right there. And we'll do equations of this in IM3, integrated math 3, of that parabola right there. 
Okay, a little bit in I am one and I am two, but there's a parabola right there. So the cross section gives us this parabola. It gives us a lot more, you guys. Look at this right here. Okay, here's that parabola right here. Now this is a parabola also, but um, the hyperbola part would be if I could stack this same cone right on top of this guy up here. Okay, whoops, we can't see that. Let's see. Um, uh, so right up here, if I could if I could stack a cone right on top, and you have two cones on top of each other, and I sliced them both, it would give us this uh, um, parabola downstairs, and then there'd be another duplicate one up here, and together they're called a hyperbola. Don't worry about that. That's later. That's in I am three, you guys. But we could slice a cone right here, and it gives us not a circle, it gives us an ellipse. Okay, if we sliced it so it's parallel to the base, it'll give us a circle right here. Okay, parabolas, don't worry about that, but that's later. So anyways, I'm just talking about different slices. Okay, so here, describe each cross-section of the right rectangular prism with the uh, the name of its shape. Okay, so, so they're both right rectangular prisms. Can you see the boxes right here? And we're going to go pew, and slice it right there with that blue plane right there. What's this cross-section right here? Well, it's a triangle, okay? How about this guy right here? Okay, and we're going to go here, sound effects. Okay, so we cut it right there. And we're assuming that this blue cut, you guys, is parallel to the base. Because if it's not parallel to the base, it changes it up a little bit, and I'll show you in just a minute. But what's this cross section? That's going to be a rectangle right there. Can you see that rectangle right there? All right, my computer's being weird. I'm getting my mouse. Okay, all right. So here, so a right rectangular prism has six faces that are all rectangles. Just think of a box. The front and back are rectangles. The left and right are rectangles. The top and bottom are rectangles. So there's six sides to a rectangle. Now, when I pass out a test, you guys, and there's a piece of paper, you know, and I tell them, you only have to do uh, the two sides of this piece of paper because there's actually six sides, you guys. you got the front and back side and then, of course, the edges and and they all say, oh, that's corny. Anyways, so anything to make it make it fun. Okay, all right, so here's another rectangle right here, you guys. Okay, and we're going to go, here goes sound effects. We're going to slice it right there. Okay, it's not parallel to the bases, so this is going to be just a parallelogram. I can't assume it's a rectangle right there. Okay, and then this uh, looks like a square, but there's no reason to tell me it's a square. All as it says, it's a right rectangular prism. So if it was a square, it would be a square. But if it was a, if it's just rectangular, then it's a rectangle. I don't know. Um, I would probably say okay on that because it sure looks like a square. But but one side might be like 4.2 inches, and the other one is 4.1 inches, where you can't really tell if one side's longer than the other. All right, is it possible to have a circular cross section in the in these rectangular prisms? Can I slice these? To get a circular uh, shape. No, because uh -uh, there's no curves in these kind of prisms right here, so we couldn't get that. Have to be in a cone or a cylinder or something. Okay, cylinder is like a, a can. Um, okay, so a right rectangular pyramid over here with a non square base. Okay, so that means that this base is a rectangle. Okay, so here it is a right rectangular pyramid, and it's named by the base. So the base is a rectangle. Okay, so rectangular means that the base is a rectangle. This is the vertex. This lesson doesn't tell us about that. And these are called the lateral sides. Again, this lesson doesn't tell us that right there, but the lateral sides are all triangles. Okay, and then in a right pyramid, the point where the triangle sides meet right up here meets at the center. So it's in the center of this rectangle. If we drew a line straight down, it would be called the altitude. Again, this lesson doesn't talk about that. But this altitude would be going right down to the center of this rectangle right there. Okay, so the shape of the base, what's the shape of the base? Well, that's easy. We just talked about that. It's a rectangle. The shape of each side is a triangle. Is it possible for a cross-section of the pyramid to have each shape? Could we get a square? Hmm, boy, I don't know. If, if this was a square on the bottom, I'd say yes. But since it's a rectangle, I can't get a square, so I'm going to say no. But we can get rectangles. Okay, how about a triangle? Can we get a triangle on this? Yes, I'll show you that in just a second. You're thinking, where? Okay, well, cross that. Oh, I'll show you that in just a second. How about a circle? Can we get a circle? No. And how about a trapezoid? Could we get a trapezoid if we slice this? That's 
it's hard to see, but I'll show you that also. Yes, we can. So section C says sketch the cross section of the yeses of the rectangular pyramids below. So let's just slide that up right there. Okay, so let's do this one. Let's do slice it so we can get a rectangle. Well, here it is right there. Okay, see that rectangle? Now let's slice it so we can get a triangle. Okay, right there, right through the top. Okay, has to go through the top. How about a trapezoid? Well, that's when it doesn't go through the top, like that guy. See the trapezoid right there? Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, I like this lesson. All right, so um, uh, suppose the last figure had a square base. Would our answers in B be the same? Okay, so here's our answers right here. Well, if this was a square base, then could we make a square? Sure, we could. So, and and uh, all the other answers would be the same because squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. So, if we could only change the first answer, I'm sorry, if we could change it to square, then it changes this first answer to a yes right there. All right. Okay. What else do I have? Okay. So, describe and compare the cross sections. Uh, created when two horizontal planes intersect a right rectangular pyramid. Okay, all right, so I digged around on the internet and I found this right here. Here's a right rectangular pyramid, and here's a slice. Here's another slice right here. Now, this is a rectangle. This is a rectangle. This is a rectangle. This one's bigger than this one. So the smaller guy is further away from the base than the bigger guy. So if we did that... <clears throat> Then both cross sections would be rectangles. They have the same shape but different sizes. The rectangle that's further away from the base is the smaller rectangle. All right, you guys, I hope that lesson makes sense and take care.